Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Black Talon Episode 4, Scourge. It is set in Warhammer Age of Sigmar, so it will be magic swords and crossbows instead of warp chain swords and bolters, but it still has solid plot and grisly violence. This episode is brought to you by Mastermind Models and Miniatures and Hawkins and Company. Mastermind Models and Minis is an insanely talented paint studio out of Huntsville, Alabama who do commissions, so if your pile of shame is weighing you down, be sure to check them out in the description below and be sure to tell them that we sent you. Hawkins & Company is a veteran-owned leather-making firm using the best American-made materials to create the finest handmade wallets available. Coming in classic bifold trucker and biker builds with a variety of patterns and insignias, all made from leather sourced from one of America's last tanneries. So if your Velcro wallet is starting to show its age, buy a rugged, beautiful American-made piece of art from Hawkins & Company and use coupon code COUNTERPOINTS for 15% off. We are greeted by a father and child in the realm of Gyron, also known as the realm of life. The father is teaching his daughter about when to pick ripe fruit when a sudden storm of Nurgle blankets them in pestilence. They call out for a female warrior named Thea, who is shown creating the hill as they're swarmed by rot. This sequence is revealed to be a memory from Neve Blacktail and attempting to put back the shards of her soul after so many reforgings. Neve charges Lori, the Idenith Deepkin, with finding the location of the memory, which Lori does easily. Hendrick demands to come along, even though this is an unsanctioned mission. Forebodingly, he warns Lori to tell no one of their secret venture. to watch as everything I had grown rotted. They forced me to listen as hunger and plague consumed those who still lived. Do you know what it sounded like? Not cries. Not pleading. Just air passing through blistered throats, bubbling in lungs filled with pus. It sounded like water boiling dry over a fire. me. Though golden gods reached down to ease my pain, my flesh withered and the tree grew through me. It drank from the rot of my life and it sustained me. As it did, I saw the truth. Existence is cruel, and the more you care, the more it will hurt. You can either embrace that cruelty, or you can be its victim. And as I accepted that truth, for the first time, I knew that I would suffer no more. Oh, please. It was a gift. Bitter, but true. A gift I offer to you. As it was offered to me. The pain. Oh, will it really end? 
It ends. The suffering, though... That is eternal. Suffering will not be yours. We are witness to the monologue of a Nurglite lord converting new recruits. The father of the child shown previously recounts how he was left to die impaled on a tree and how he was witness to the horror of all he loved dying around him. Where others drew their crackled last breaths, he persisted, and the tree he tended gave him new life after accepting Nurgle's gifts. It's clear he is bitter that no heroes or golden gods came to save him, resenting the Stormcast Eternals and Sigmar for failing to save or to avenge his village. Instead, he chose to embrace the cruelty of existence and offset the suffering inherent in life onto others by giving them Nurgle's gifts. What I believe is darkly revealed here is the lack of choice in some of Chaos's converts. Where the Stormcast are heroes plucked during their valorous deaths to fight on for order, there are many more souls who are left to the ravages of death and chaos. When they are abandoned to the malevolent forces of the world, if they are not killed outright, they are left with few choices. If this man lost his wife, child, and settlement to Nurgle, there were no heroes to save him and no end in sight, at what point in his suffering does just accepting the gifts of chaos make more sense? He is now using the same logic to break unfortunate souls and convert them to his dark path. Shikana is reforged and is desperate to warn Neve that Plague marches for Hammerhall. Plague Lord Thesis leads them, and in order to form a new hunt for him, Shakana insists on pursuing Neve into the Nurglite Garden. They warn the Chamber Sacrosanct Stormcast to alert the city, and here's a brief aside about the forces they just warned. The Chamber Sacrosanct are the magic wielders of the Stormcast Eternals. They are particularly in tune to the magic of storms and are thus able to channel etheric lightning through their weapons. As a part of the study of the arcane magics, they are able to shepherd wayward Stormcast souls back to the anvil with reforging, and if a soul is too damaged or corrupted, they will obliterate it. They are viewed with suspicion and fear by other Stormcasts because if a warrior is too blemished after a death in a blighted realm, it is the Chamber Sacrosanct that will either imprison or annihilate the errant soul. The taint of the plague god lies heavy on this place. You did not need to be here. We must be cautious. That is all. It was different once. I see few signs of defenses. No walls. Just terraces for cultivation. Foolish to build a settlement here. This is the heartland of Gyron, the most stable part of the realm. They thought they were safe. They wanted to make a life. You remember that? I understand it. I think we are close. No matter what.
Neve, you need to stop. You are losing hold of the present. The Horned Shadow. It came for me. A murderer of heroes. It came here because of me. I am the reason it happened. Neve, don't go any further. I fought. I tried to shield them, but... I fell... here. But... I can still see it. I, I shouldn't be able to if, if I... Leave. Stop. You need to stop. Please. If I died here, why can I remember more? Leave. Go no further. You don't need to remember more. You are who you are. <laughs> Remember this! Transcended life's lies and shackles. But I confess the hunger for revenge still clings to me. I don't see them. Something isn't right here. Shakana! Revenge is coming, though. As it was promised to me. <gasps> Hendrik! What's happened? Where's Need? There are no heroes. Under every golden lie, there is a sea of darkness. Hendrik criticizes the settlers for not mustering defenses, but Neve counters that the settlers had picked the area because they believed it to be the most magically stable and they wished to escape, perhaps naively, the cycle of war and death that comes with being in the free cities of Sigmar. As Neve finds more and more evidence of a battle, she becomes trapped in the memories of butchery. Forebodingly, Neve sees the battle from the perspective of a chaos warrior with dual axe slashes coming down against the warrior Thea. To quote the great social commentator PewDiePie, I'm starting to see a pattern I don't like. <laughs> Hendrik kills Neve just as she's coming to the climax of the vision, sending her soul into blighted skies. The Plague Lord promises revenge as Shikana and Rostis find Hendrik, and a plague army bursts from the ground, led by a great unclean demon of Nurgle as a harbinger of doom, leaving the entire episode on a cliffhanger for now. Now, Games Workshop has politely, if forcefully, requested that we do not use the entirety of an episode in our reviews and breakdowns. I view it as my job to cut out a healthy chunk of the content so you have an incentive to go back to the original, but to leave enough meat and bones on the episode, particularly the gritty and satisfying violence, while filling in the gaps with informative and compelling lore. I genuinely do love creating this content, and it forces me to expand my knowledge of the universe and not just rely on my passion. 
So if you like my breakdowns, like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell so you can see whenever new content drops. Comment down below and feel free to fight it out in the comment section over lore and narrative interpretations. Uh, this one in particular being, who is Neve Black Talon? If you can't think of anything to say, then type in comment for the comment gods. I will salute you in real life with an Aquila, but I will reply with an 07 in the comment section saluting you for your servers. Become a YouTube or Patreon member to help support the channel or check out our sponsors. I appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next one. Until the end. Special thanks to The Talented X, Trippy Liquids, Aircraft Sparky, Dylan Verdea, Stephanie Luminous, Tam, Kent, Sport Brand, Andrew Coey, Flippant Hubris, Trusty, Hippopotate, Happy Rogue, Christian Stafford, Michael Cranston, Sky Anon, Enclave Operator, It's Harold, Jaeger Bradley, Sir Pubert, Eagle Watch 123, Bizzard, Flaccid Phoenix, TSG Comics, Fezzles, Diogenes, Crabs Go Pitch, Taze Grove, Astronaut Farmer, The Real Birdman, Soren Axelson, The One Above All, Bud123, Fondue, Deus Halcyon, Vox, Drazar, Lucifer the Doberman, Female Escort IRL, Tango Hotel, Mitchell Johnston, Sir Liamson, John, Poofy, Leo Whitmer, Froggy Style, Adrian, Azriel, Cole G, Grassroots Hegemon, Christian Valeris, Name, Sir Fortesque, M. Penner, Weekend Jail, Exart Logan, and Jamalou.